Other fundamental issues, such as transport, were also addressed. Lack of accessible transportation is one of the major obstacles to full participation faced by people with disabilities. The human right of being able to, uh, to not be limited in the movement from one country to another country, limited by architectural barriers, limited by um, transportational barriers, limited by lack of funding. We believe that that's a human right. It's no point in having a job if you can, if there is no transportation. And like in Norway, which is a very rich country, we, there are very few bus buses that we can use. Without transport, we can do nothing. We can't live, we can't move. If we had uniformity of service and acceptable standards, therefore it would be much easier for the disabled community to travel within Europe. On Wednesday afternoon, all the Freedom Drivers were invited to attend a disability intergroup meeting dedicated to a discussion of the Strasbourg demands. NL President Mr John Evans and the Irish Freedom Driver Anne-Marie Flanagan addressed the assembled intergroup members and Freedom Drivers, encouraging the European Union to promote and develop new strategies and policies that would reflect the key eight demands. In particular, they emphasised the need for personal assistance services as a necessary replacement for institutionalisation. It was stressed that progress can only be made if there is effective representation of people with disabilities in European inclusion strategies. Speaking on behalf of all Freedom Drive participants, Amory called on the disability intergroup to actively hear what was being said and to believe that the people saying it, people with disabilities, know best of all what will enable them to achieve full and active participation. Personal assistance started out in Ireland based on a number of EU funded programmes and the experience of personal assistance in Dublin particularly and in the wider country area has been extremely positive and popular from a, an individual point of view. Also the service providers have now seen the light in terms of the value of the service the difference in how the service serves the needs of the individual and the person-centeredness of the service. I think that clearly um, the two major issues that make a radical uh, difference to the lives of people with disabilities are is access and um, the assistance of personal assistance. Disabled people, I think, in England and other parts of the world have um, the right to independent living through personal assistance schemes, um, which allows us to um, be in control of our lifestyle. The availability of P the personal assistance service should be available indeed in every region, never mind in every country in Europe. That the European Union needs to have a European policy on personal assistance. We have the um, basic right to uh, full-time personal assistance service and if we stand united we will get it and if we don't stand united we won't get it because the politicians and lawmakers won't listen to individuals saying it. They will listen to a group saying it. September 25th, the final day of the Freedom Drive, focused on the Court of Human Rights. 
The agenda included an introduction to and a tour of the Court of Human Rights, the Commission of Human Rights and the European Committee for the Prevention of Torture. The introduction to the Court of Human Rights focused on the history and workings of the Court, aiming to inform the group as to how rights are upheld at a European level. Don Bailey, an Irish freedom driver, gave an account of the personal assistance service in Ireland, specifically focusing on the European Convention of Human Rights. Freedom drivers met with the Committee for the Prevention of Torture, or CPT, in the afternoon. The CPT's task is to examine the treatment of persons deprived of their liberty and in doing so it is entitled to visit any place where a public authority holds such persons. The CPT may then formulate recommendations to strengthen, if necessary, their protection against torture and inhumane or degrading treatment or punishment. Freedom Drive representatives met Hannah Juncker, who is involved with examining the circumstances of people cared for in intellectual disability services and for detained children. Inhumane and degrading treatment, which many people with disabilities might endure, is often the result of state-run or funded agencies not providing adequate support for people with disabilities to live with independence, dignity and personal choice. The committees here and the people here are very, very, um, very shocked as to why there are still human rights abuses, why the rights of people with disabilities are being neglected in a state like Ireland, a state with a booming economy, with many, many people employed in human rights organisations, but yet people with disabilities have their rights denied. We've learned one thing today, that there is information out there, that this information can be disseminated to people with disabilities to empower us together. In relation to the committee we met with, for the prevention of uh, torture, inhuman and degrading treatment at the very, very pertinent to the lives of disabled people, despite that a lot of people don't actually realise that fact. And I think we really do need to work with that committee and support and inform that committee so that they can do their job more effectively for disabled people. Strasbourg also offered a chance for people to socialise and build links with others from different countries who share similar experiences. The importance of Strasbourg is that it's finally um, given people within the independent living movement the opportunity to take what they've been looking for within individual countries for many, many years outside of the nation states and bringing it to a larger forum like Europe. This is not the end, this is merely the beginning, that we have taken it to a higher level, we are willing to push forward, we have very, very limited resources, but that is not going to stop us, we are going to continue. It's a wonderful, uh, it's been a wonderful three days. We all have to go back to our individual organisations to try to get them together under one huge, if possible, the word I'll use here is umbrella organisations. The European Union and Ireland as a member state are both growing and changing. The Strasbourg Freedom Drive is an example of how effective people can be when they come together. It is clear that this was felt by all those who participated, as well indeed as by the politicians they met. Well, of course, in Ireland, uh, in spite of our divisions, which lead to our problems there, north and south and within the north, the problems of disabled people, no matter what community they come from, are all exactly the same. Therefore, there's no doubt that it's one issue that should unite all of the people, not only of Ireland, but of Europe, in dealing with with, in dealing with the problems of disabled people and in taking the necessary action to assist them. Infrequently do we get disabled people, representatives of the disability movement at the grassroots, actually with us in Strasbourg and in Brussels. And this event, 150 people genuinely representing the voice of disabled people at the local level has been a very moving event that has enabled us to ensure the voice of disabled people and the call for full human and civil rights of disabled people is heard throughout this European Parliament.